And what we do on Fridays is, is what we call wrap the week, which is basically look at the last five trading sessions from Friday to Friday. How much has changed according to that big picture uh, uh, period? And, 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 and what are the long-term trends telling us? How can we update the long-term trends for today? And we usually do a couple different things. First, we're just going to do a quick touch on the, uh, on the markets in case you missed going into the close where things are at. Hit on some themes there. We're going to look at the weekly returns for how these major asset classes have evolved week to week. And then we're going to get to the Mindful Investor Live chart list, which is our rundown of some of the key charts that we review every week. Same set of charts. Starting with the market today, S&P closing up 0.9% almost to 34.77. So it's a, you know, a nice, a nice up move. And again, we're sort of processing these closes as we record it. So um, things jump, maybe jumping around just a, a, a touch or so, but, uh, but overall a pretty decent up move and a continuation of what we saw on Thursday where we finished at the highs of the day. Mid caps and small caps up as well, not up as much though. So this was more of the large cap uh, trade really uh, moving it forward. And technology was the number one sector followed by consumer discretionary. So we're sort of back to the average day, I feel, that sort of got us here, which was an uptrend Big cap tech and consumer leading the way on the downside. You have things like energy, real estate, utilities, financials. This is sort of what the picture looked like for, for quite a while, I think, for, for many uh, days during the, the months leading up to the September high. So a bit of uh, back to, to normal, I guess. The VIX back below uh, 25 now again. Looking at other asset classes, the dollar's actually weak and it came off uh, pretty good with the UUP down 0.6%. That uptrend that we've had in the dollar, the strong dollar environment, really has rotated lower. And this is at a time when small caps overall have been performing relatively well uh, compared to the large cap index. That's a bit of a, of a head scratcher of sorts. The bond uh, market essentially finishing flat came off really uh, heavily in the mid, uh, midday, but came back to uh, the TLT finishing flat for the day. Yields a little bit higher. On the commodity side, oil weaker today, and that's obviously uh, you know main reason why energy is down. Gold and silver actually uh, pretty strong to the upside with silver ETF up about five and a half percent. We're going to look at that chart uh, in a little bit, especially the uh, the gold trade. Those precious metals came off you know sort of before stocks did, and now are all really breaking out of. Uh, of nice support zones. So, uh, so overall, potentially resuming that long-term uptrend as well. And just you can see today's trading in silver was essentially just uh, resilient from the beginning. One of these, I think it's this one, is the uh, is the intermarket chart. I'm going to refresh this. There we go. So this is going through about at the uh, the close. We're looking at just some major asset classes, key indexes to pay attention to. Here's the S&P 500 in black. The labels are off just a, a touch, but the S&P is here in black. And it was up 3.8%, uh, 3.9% for the week, starting the clock on the last Friday's close. Very close to that were a cluster of things. This is why the labels are kind of jumbled up. Here we have the NASDAQ just above 4%. Emerging markets almost the same and Bitcoin up 4.5%. Two of the indexes we follow outperformed uh, stocks in a uh, more significant way this week with small caps up 6.4%. And that relative strength of small caps is the thing we've talked about. I think that's an important one to pay attention to. We've all gotten very comfortable with the idea of small caps underperforming because it's been happening for years and years However, we're starting to see signs of that really starting to, uh, starting to change with small caps flourishing on a relative basis. And this week was, a, was certainly an exclamation point to that new trend. Crude oil came off today, but overall up almost 9%. That was the top uh, performer out of all of these major uh, indexes we're following. Underperforming stocks this week, we have gold only up 1.4%, so still positive. That all really came uh, today. Uh, as of yesterday, it was down for the week, uh, but really uh, rallied with the precious metal trade uh, today. The dollar weaker, 0.9% for the week. And if you look at the bond markets, that was the worst performer of all of them, down 1.6%. So that stock to bond ratio, we look at the SPY versus the TLT. It's in our Mindful Investor Live chart list. I don't know if we'll get all the way to that point. But that is certainly, uh, you know, continuing to lean into stocks over bonds and weeks like this are what continue to make that ratio go higher. Let's continue on our wrap the week uh, adventure by going here to the Mindful Investor Live chart list. Again, if you've not watched the show on a Friday before, we use the same chart list every week. It's to hopefully reinforce to you one of the things I think is most important for active investors, for financial advisors, institutional investors, have a set routine of things that you look at and do the same way every morning, every week, uh, every month, every quarter, whatever time frame is relevant for you. And so this is a piece of my weekly routine that I use every week. And it starts on a Thursday, it finishes on a Monday, and it goes through the same 
steps every week. And, and I would attribute any, any awareness I've had of market activity has probably most likely come from the consistent review of a consistent group of, uh, of charts. I'd encourage you to explore the same. If you, have, if you don't have this, go to uh, the articles page, go to the Mindful Investor, which is my uh, uh, page here on stock charts, and click on the very top. There's a link to this chart list. You can save it to your login. Chart number one is the S&P market trend, and it's remained positive pretty much on all three time frames. It starts with a long-term trend, which is based on the 21 and 34 week exponential moving averages. This turned positive uh, a while ago back here in June has remained positive uh, through today. And, and, and it would take a lot of uh, deterioration to turn that anywhere near negative. Uh, it's been positive for most of the last five years, as you can, uh, as you can see here, and, and rightfully so. That's been the, uh, certainly the overarching trend in the, uh, in the market. The medium term trend is based on the weekly PPO, which is uh, very similar to the weekly MACD. And it's a traditional uh, you know, settings, traditional look at that medium term trend for me. Uh, this came very close to turning negative over the last couple of weeks and has not done so. So the, the lines have not actually crossed. It's remained positive. So for me, that medium term has remained positive. And what this basically illustrates is this pullback that we saw uh, sort of, uh, you know, early September to mid-September was a pullback within a longer term period of strength. And that would change if we, you know, start to rotate a little bit lower, start to break some key support. And this, uh, this, this line, uh, this indicator would turn negative. Short term is usually done on the daily chart for me, but as a placeholder on the weekly chart, I have this one, which is just looking at the price relative to its five-week exponential moving average that's been positive for the last couple of weeks. And uh, essentially long-term, medium-term, short-term, all thumbs up at the moment. You know, the daily chart of the S&P has been a great exercise, in my opinion, on the value of support and resistance levels. And the, the point of the name of this show, which is the final bar, when I teach technical analysis to new analysts, to new investors, I always tell them, start with the final bar, start with the current bar here, and then look to the left and, and identify key levels to pay attention to. One of the steps on my checklist involves you know, the current price relative to key support and resistance. And, you know, if you did that, you would have noticed the importance of this congestion area from uh, mid-August, which was the first step down after the peak in uh, early September. You also would have noticed this level from uh, early June, which was reiterated a number of times in the month of July. It's highlighted here in this blue shaded area. And that's right where we pulled back to. We never got down through that. So that area of support, I think, uh, held and is even further validated if and when we get some downturn, which at some point we will, I will be looking at these key levels again. Here, the 50-day moving average in this congestion zone uh, from before around 3350 to 3400, and then uh, even more so here, 3200 to 3250, which has proven to be a, a, a key level to pay attention to. You know, it's interesting to note just one other anecdote. The RSI is just above 60, and in bullish phases, the RSI doesn't tend to get too much below 40 and it tends to become overbought on upswings in bear phases, the RSI tends to get oversold and doesn't tend to get above 60. So pushing above 60 right about here going into next week would be one more data point sort of fulfilling this bullish reversal that we've seen. This is a series of breadth indicators, cumulative advanced decline lines based on a number of different universes of, uh, of US equities. Here's the S&P closing values. You can see this is color coded based on where I'm seeing the trend. Two of these, the S&P advanced decline line and the mid cap advanced decline line have now broken above their peaks from uh, August and a similar peak in September here for the S&P. So both of those at all at new time, uh, new highs, excuse me, uh, for this run and both confirming a, a very bullish configuration. So that's telling because, you know, anecdotally, uh, myself and others at times have talked about, you know, Amazon and Alphabet and Facebook and, uh, you know, these small number of mega cap stocks that are pushing the market higher. These breadth lines making new highs tell you that's not the whole story, that there are plenty of names and plenty of cap tiers that are able to uh, managing to get to uh, to new highs. And, and that's what that's telling you. Not quite an all clear for the small cap index or the common stock only index. These aren't updated for today's close just yet for Friday. So I would assume based what on what I'm seeing in the characteristics, I would expect both of these to turn uh, positive. And when I review them again over the weekend, I'll most likely flip them all green. One of the key parts of, uh, of I think, a skeptical thesis here in, uh, in, in mid-September was the anemic number of uh, new highs, right? If the market is in decent shape, you have a, at least some number, a meaningful number of stocks making new highs. So even though the S&P is not at all-time highs, other stocks should be, right? 
stocks like Home Builders and Procter and Gamble and and many other names, uh, FedEx, other stocks that we've reviewed as a you know together on the show in recent weeks. You need more and more of those because you know in before the S and P makes high new highs, you will have individual stocks that are able to do it. What this week has shown me is that we're starting to get traction along those lines. And I think one of the most encouraging things I've seen is a consistent number of stocks making new 52-week highs. Again, this isn't updated quite for today, but as of yesterday's close, you had 12% of the S&P making a new 52-week high uh, on Thursday, which is pretty good. That's probably going to go up today. Uh, looking at stocks relative to their moving average is always a key part here. Um, you know, over 50% on both sides, and, and, and that speaks to, the again, the underlying strength uh, behind this, uh, this current upswing. Now over 70% of the S&P above their 200-day moving average. That's good. I'm not worried about the fact that that's too high because you will see plenty of times like here in uh, you know, late 2019, you became uh, over 70% and it remained up there for you know, four or five months. So just because it's above there does not suggest you know, it's exhaustion and we're going to come down. In a healthy uptrend, these sort of breadth readings will, re- will become elevated and remain elevated for uh, serious parts, uh, um, excuse me, long periods of time. What I would look for is if you do start to get new highs and those new highs are not confirmed by the breadth measures, that's when you can start to be a little more concerned. In terms of the AAII survey, it's worth pointing out that this actually narrowed, this came out on Thursday and it's not, you know, again, sentiment is sort of third on my list after price and breadth, but I always pay attention to things like this. It is, it is close to tilting net positive, net bullish for the first time since February. In longer bull market phases, this uh, ratio, the, the difference between these two, it leans more bulls, bulls over bears, and it tends to be for longer period of times, you know, going up to a, a market peak. There's been none of that in the last uh, six to seven months after the February, uh, February peak. That's certainly one thing that would be uh, telling is if you finally turn positive, I don't see that as uh, necessarily a negative. I see that as a recognition of further upside at this point. Number of ratio charts. We don't have time to go through all of these, but again, when people talk about consumer discretionary and tell me it's all Amazon, I point to this, which is the equal weighted ratio or the equal weighted ETFs, consumer discretionary versus consumer staples, making a new swing high for the last uh, six months. So overall, it's telling you it's not just Amazon, it's, uh, it's other things as well. Semiconductors blowing out to new relative highs again this week. That consistent pattern is going to be one of those catalysts that I think continues to uh, push the market higher. Having said that, where we'll finish is this chart, which is small caps versus large caps, the IWM versus the SPY, back above the 200-day moving average for the first time in a couple years, which is a very meaningful change. If we're able to break that ratio above the June peak, which was back here, that would be a huge rotation more to the upside, speaking to the benefits of digging down in the uh, in the smaller companies that you may have uh, mentally written off because of the dominance of the mega cap trade. Small cap trade, I think based on this, uh, if not completely back, is back enough to warrant some, uh, some attention. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.